In example three, y varies jointly as x and z. When x equals 4 and z equals 3, y is equal to 60. Find z when x equals 7 and y equals 105. So recall the equation for joint variation, y equals kxz. Now let's figure out the equation for the constant. Let's just solve for the constant. This would be, I would divide both sides by xz to get y over x times z. Now I can set up a proportion. I know that k equals y over x times z, and I'm given this first set of values. x equals 4, z equals 3, and y is 60. OK, now I'm also asked to find z given these other two values. So I know that k equals, in the second scenario, y is 105 x is 7, and the unknown is z. So now I have, I can form a proportion because since this equals k and that equals k, these two equal each other. So 60 divided by 4 times 3 equals 105 times 7 z. Well, this is 60 divided by 12 equals 105 divided by 7 z. 60 divided by 12 is just 5. So 5 equals 105 divided by 7z. I'm going to multiply both sides by 7z to get 7z times 5 equals 105. 7 times 5 is 35 times z equals 105. Dividing both sides by 35, you'll find that z equals 3. Again, another way to solve this would have been to just say, OK, the constant of variation is 60 divided by 12, or 5. Knowing what the constant variation is, I could have just substituted that here and then solved for z. So you can either use a proportion or find the constant of variation and then use the second set of values and find the missing variable. Okay, y varies inversely as x, so example 4 is an example of inverse variation. And in inverse variation, we have x times y equals k. When x is 12 and y is 4, this holds true. So these values satisfy this equation. And we're asked to find x if y equals negative 1 half. So let's go about this by finding k. I know that these values satisfy this equation. So 12 times 4 equals k. Therefore, k equals 48. Then I'm asked to find x if y equals negative 1 half. So x, y equals k. So I'm, I want to find x. I know that y equals negative 1 half. And I know that k equals 48. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. To get that x equals negative 96. So again, this is using the equation for inverse variation, solving for the constant of variation, and then using that constant in the equation with the value of x to solve for the, for the value of y to solve for the unknown variable, which is x. So that concludes this lecture on direct, inverse, and joint variation. Thanks for visiting educator.com.